What if the fungi in your gut, shaped by your DNA, are quietly steering your risk for heart disease and other chronic conditions, even when you and a friend eat the same foods? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today, we're examining new research on your gut microbiome, the fungal side of your microbiome, and how genetics, antibiotics, and microbial patterns converge to predict chronic disease risk, including cardiovascular disease. I'll guide the key findings and what they could mean for you. I'm Alara Skye. We'll keep this focused and practical. You'll hear how scientists connected 148 genetic variants to specific gut fungi, why a yeast called Kazakhstania tracks with heart risk, and how antibiotic use can tilt your microbial balance toward trouble, We'll close with concrete steps drawn directly from the recommendations provided. A team at Penn State's One Health Microbiome Center ran a genome-wide association study, scanning human DNA alongside stool and blood measures from 125 individuals. They linked 148 genetic variants across seven chromosomes to nine groups of gut fungi. One genus, Kazakhstania, stood out for its association with cardiovascular disease risk, and the genetic fungal signals were validated in larger cohorts, including UK and international coronary artery disease datasets. The authors were clear about why this matters. Gut fungi have been understudied compared to bacteria, yet the data show your genes shape which fungi can take hold. That combination, DNA plus fungal profile, aligns with measurable disease risk. It reframes gut health. Fungi are not passive bystanders. They interact with your immune system and can sustain low-grade inflammation tied to chronic illness. Here's the practical implication. Two people can share a similar diet and still diverge in outcomes because genetic differences set the stage for which fungi thrive. If your genetics favor fungi linked with inflammation, your baseline risk goes up. Diet still matters, but the evidence here says even strong dietary habits may not fully override gene-guided fungal patterns. Antibiotics complicate the picture. They eliminate bacteria, but leave fungi intact. That removal of bacterial competitors can let pathogenic fungi expand. The researchers noted that antibacterial treatments indirectly shift fungal abundance by altering the bacterial partners and signaling molecules those fungi rely on. Animal data show microbial networks becoming more fragmented after antibiotics, fewer connections, greater fragility, and higher susceptibility to future disruption. This has clinical weight beyond theory. Separate research cited in the discussion found that gut microbiome patterns are powerful predictors of major adverse cardiovascular events in people with coronary heart disease. In one analysis of 679 high-risk patients, 10 bacterial strains were combined into an intestinal microbiota-based risk score that identified who was most likely to suffer another event. High-score individuals tended to have worse metabolic markers and features of dysbiosis. Put these threads together and you get a coherent message. Your microbiome, bacteria and fungi, tracks closely with heart risk, yet most clinics still ignore it. Standard checkups focus on blood pressure and cholesterol while skipping gut assessment, leaving a predictive and potentially modifiable signal on the table. This doesn't argue against diet. It sharpens it. The findings suggest that genetics select the fungal players, antibiotics can shift the balance further, and your day-to-day -day inputs either stabilize or destabilize the system. That's why two similar meal plans can yield different outcomes and why probiotics aimed only at bacteria may miss a key driver when fungi are involved. Let's translate the provided recommendations into clear actions. First, shift away from inflammatory fats. If you're using seed oils or relying on processed and fried foods, you're feeding inflammation that worsens fungal imbalance. Replace those oils with stable animal fats like grass-fed butter, gay, or tallow. This reduces stress on your gut lining and supports steadier cellular energy. Second, use carbohydrates strategically to support cellular energy. Bring daily intake to at least 250 grams from clean sources such as whole fruits, root vegetables, and properly prepared white rice. 
The goal is to supply fuel in a form your system can handle while you work on restoring balance. Third, rebuild your gut environment after antibiotics. When bacteria are wiped out, fungi can overgrow. Slowly reintroduce foods rich in natural probiotics, such as fermented vegetables, to help restore equilibrium. This is a measured re-entry, not a rush, aimed at re-establishing microbial stability. Fourth, reduce hidden antibiotic exposure from food. Conventionally raised chicken and other meats may contribute low-dose antibiotic residues. Prioritize pasture-raised or grass-fed animal proteins when you can. It's a straightforward way to lower continual antimicrobial pressure on your gut ecosystem. Fifth, strengthen resilience against fungal overgrowth with simple food choices. If processed sugars and packaged snacks make you feel worse, treat that as feedback. Choose foods closer to their natural state, sip juice with pulp instead of processed fruit drinks, and eat whole fruits daily. These steps favor beneficial bacteria and help keep fungi in check. A few clarifications from the study narrative help set expectations. Antibiotics alone can tip an already vulnerable system toward imbalance if your genetics lean pro-inflammatory. That partly explains why a standard bacterial probiotic doesn't always resolve symptoms. The fungal side has its own dynamics. Also, when you hear that genetics shape your gut fungi, it doesn't erase agency. It highlights where to intervene, reduce inflammatory inputs, rebuild after perturbations, and align choices with microbial stability. If you're dealing with persistent fatigue, gut discomfort, or a family history of cardiovascular disease, consider how this framework might explain why typical approaches fall short. Your genetic fungal profile may be the missing layer. The data here connect that profile to measurable risk signals and suggest that ignoring fungi can mean overlooking a driver of inflammation. Use this as a checkpoint. Review recent antibiotic exposure, scan your kitchen for seed oils, and assess whether processed foods are creeping in. If they are, the outlined steps give you a path to begin restoring balance that aligns with the evidence presented. Here's your challenge. Over the next seven days, remove seed oils from your meals, bring your carbohydrates to at least 250 grams from whole fruits, root vegetables, and properly prepared white rice, and add a small daily portion of fermented vegetables if you've recently taken antibiotics. At the end of the week, note changes in digestion, energy, and cravings, and decide which step to continue for the next month. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.